China. 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 Right at the beginning of the watch market downturn, many watch dealers and YouTubers alike were pinning their hopes on a rebound in the watch market, an uptick in the prices on basically a return to the market of the Chinese buyer. The hope was China, who seemed to be stuck in 2020, will come out of their COVID-related lockdowns and return in their droves to buying up luxury and brands such as Rolex, Patek Philippe and Audemars Piguet once again and stabilize the watch market. Many dealers were blaming their absence from the watch market as instrumental to a general decrease in demand for these goods, which led to excess supply and ultimately lower secondary market prices. But is this true? Or is it all really fantasy? How important actually are the Chinese to the demand of watches on the secondary market and the strength of prices? And is it as straightforward as to say that once China remove their zero COVID policy and consistent lockdown policies that they will return to spending and actually come to the rescue of the watch market correction. Over the past few decades, the economic portrait of China has evolved massively from slow-growing poor nation to a fast-rising global economic power. And for years, forecasters have debated not whether, but when the country will actually overtake the US as the world's largest economy. And while China remains an economic juggernaut, it is also facing a whole lot of economic trouble right now. There are warning signs on multiple fronts from COVID-related shutdowns going on and on in China, Beijing, to also a weakening and decline of the housing market. Now, as we know, since the start of the pandemic, China has employed a zero COVID policy. Their approach to COVID has been to lock down cities straight away as soon as a, a case pops up. And that's generally worked. Uh, around 2020 and 2021, but now there's a lot of growing anxiety in China. The Chinese population generally are shaken up now by these continuous lockdowns that have been going on for over two years and now actually have changed their attitude towards financial decision making. Most people are saying that they're, they're saving their money instead of spending it at shops and restaurants and on luxury goods. The biggest problem is, is the government seem to be Hal bent on pursuing this strategy of zero COVID and using lockdowns as their main tool to combat cases getting out of hand. This has led to a property market collapse. House prices in China have also fallen. So as you can see, the problems go much deeper in China than just the fact that if they come out of their their COVID lockdowns and, and everything gets back to normal straight away, that they'll return in their droves to buying watches on the secondary market. So where does the secondary watch market stand at the moment in China? Well, the prices of secondhand luxury goods have fallen rapidly over recent months, as really with the rest of the world. But even the wealthy have cut back on their discretionary spending and selling their Rolexes and Hermes bags to raise cash and gain liquidity. More than a dozen popular brands of luxury watches and bags have lost between 20 and 50% of their value. It does seem to be a little bit more extreme there. The secondary market has taken a bigger nosedive in China than what it has here in Europe and in the United States at 20 to 50 percent of their value. And this really has come since Shanghai, China's financial and commercial capital, imposed a very strict lockdown in March to crush the COVID outbreak. The restrictions in Shanghai and dozens of other regions have dealt a heavy blow to small business owners, many of whom have accumulated large collections of luxury watches in better times. But the repeated lockdowns, of course, have damaged their cash flow situation. What's interesting to see, though, is that in China, it seems that exports from Switzerland of new 
pieces on the primary market actually rose in July and increasing to near record levels to reach the highest value in eight years. Exports rose by 8.3% in July compared with the same month in 2021. But what's key here is that exports to the US actually rose by 13.5% which meant that the United States this year actually overtook China as the biggest single market for exports of Swiss luxury goods and obviously that includes watches as well. So China lost its top spot over this last year, possibly down to this consistent zero COVID lockdown policy and the fact that Chinese people are not getting out as much to actually buy luxury goods and therefore the Swiss shifted some supply away from China and into the United States. In terms of the Chinese contributing to our secondary market, I do think it, it has an effect. Obviously, if they're not coming over here quite as often as tourists, then they're not buying as much, and the secondary market demand for pieces for Rolex would be less. In terms of the primary market, as we've seen, uh, the data suggests that potentially big companies like Rolex have cottoned on to the fact that they're not selling as many pieces brand new as they were before this zero COVID policy that China have adopted and therefore have shifted their focus to supplying more watches to the United States as they've overtaken China in that number one spot for Swiss exports in the last year. So what would be interesting for me as well to question is if the zero COVID policy continues, would brands like Rolex and AP turn around and say, right, do we actually start sending less of our stock or for Rolex fewer of our 1 million pieces that we produce every year to China and reallocate that to Europe, the United Kingdom and the United States. If that does happen, then what will that mean? Basically, an increase in supply at the authorised dealers. It will mean that more people will be getting phone calls for sports watches, date justs, women's pieces, and it might lead to a situation, the longer that this goes on, that date justs will become readily available once again if, as you walk into an authorised dealer, women's pieces, and maybe even some of the, the, the lower sought after sports models. So I would like to keep an eye on that. How long is that gonna go on for, and will it result in companies actually starting to change what they do in terms of allocation of supply. The other question that I raised at the top of the video as well was, is it as straightforward that as soon as the Chinese population return to buying and end that zero COVID policy, that it will lead to a strengthening of the market overnight and they'll come to the rescue of the watch price correction and prices will start going up again. Is it that straightforward? No, because as we know, the Chinese economic difficulties are much more deeper than the fact that they are just stuck at home and not able to actually go out and spend money. The issue is now that these lockdowns have been going on for so long that they've had a detrimental impact on the wider economic situation in China, the housing market, and have changed the buying attitudes of the Chinese going forward for the next year or two. I think the strength of the watch market depends on quite a lot of things. Can we improve the cost of living crisis here in Europe? Fuel prices are, have spiraled out of control. And once all of that happens, then the idea would be that inflation will come down, inflation will stabilize, and then we'll return to a level where we were before. But only when that happens, I believe, will we have a market that goes from strength to strength again and prices actually go up in value. Anyway, thanks very much for watching and returning to the channel. I've been watching Vesta Vinny. Go check out beattheweightlist-watches.com. I'll see you next week in the next one. Take care.